kind of like wrestling itself, right? Like the effort is there, the desire to entertain is there, but it's ultimately the writing needs to be better. <laughs> it's pretty superficial, right? Yes. This is the movie that you guys were the most excited about of all the big year-end movies coming out this week. Iron Claw. The Iron Claw takes us back to 1980s Texas. If you've not subscribed yet, we'd love to have you because, yes, we are in the thick of it with all the awards contenders and the big holiday fair. And this kind of fits somewhere in between. I wouldn't call it a big crowd pleaser. I guess it's an awards contender. <laughs> The Iron Claw. What's it about, Alonzo? What do you like to do with your brothers? So, yeah, it's about the Von Erich family, uh, uh, Texas's own uh, international wrestling legends. The dad had been uh, a wrestler early on and uh, never quite made it to, uh, to the heights that he wanted. But uh, he and his wife had a lot of sons and he pushed all of them into sports and then eventually into wrestling as well and um, kind of stage mommed them, really kind of pushed them into, you know, reaching the glory that had eluded him. And um, the results sat Sadly, were quite tragic, and this is a true story. Um, and of the many Von Erichs, uh, only one is still with us today, and uh, one of them didn't make it into the movie. The writer director Sean Durkin decided that he had to lose a Von Erich to make this story work, so he streamlined uh, one character into representing two of them. And even with that edit, this movie st feel still feels really overstuffed. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't slow down enough. To really establish that much in terms of character, it feels a lot like just this happened and then this happened and then this happened in that really not satisfying biopic way, despite a very talented cast led off by Zac Efron and Jeremy Allen White, uh, Harris Dickinson, Moore Tierney. I mean, it's a really strong ensemble. This plays like one of those old kind of TV movies where like they got the rights, but they don't have enough money to spend on the wigs. Um, <laughs> you know, a lot of the other period detail is great. And like, this is a movie that they clearly has some money behind it, but man, those wigs are a problem. Um, but they're accurate. I mean, if you look at what the Van Erichs look like, like they had really bad hair. I guess, but there's a, there's a fine <laughs> line there. But anyway, I just, this is a, the, the, the Von Erich saga is the kind of thing where if you wrote it as fiction, you wouldn't believe it. Like it's, it's, it, it's such a, a strange and tragic story. But the challenge of that is if you're going to turn that story into narrative that no one would believe, that's a that's harder, not easier, I think, for somebody who's trying to kind of tell a biopic in that way. And it just I never felt particularly engaged with anything outside of the fact that the dad had dreams that he then forced his sons into and kind of ruined all of their lives. But that's that's not enough to hang this entire movie on. And so we get thrown a lot of incident and a lot of, you know, things that are that are that these guys are contending with in terms of mental health and their physical health, you know, and, you know, steroids and, and, and the 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 vicissitudes of pro wrestling. But none of it really lands. I mean, I, I, I think they've got these great no actors. No pun intended. Yeah, thank you. Yes. <laughs> they've got these really great actors, but they don't give them characters. They give them physiques. I totally agree with you on everything you just said. Okay, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye. Um, <laughs> no, I totally agree. And I found this so frustrating because this cast is amazing. And like people like Jeremy Allen White in particular, who have shown their deep capability for complicated, flawed characters who are rich and interesting. They give him one note to play. They give every single one of these people one note to play. So Jeremy Allen White as Carrie Von Erich is always you know, self-destructive. He's addictive. You know, we, we see where that path is headed. You know, from the, from the earliest times we see him, he's doing like push-ups in his keg stands, shirtless. And, you know, he's, he's it's a mess. It's kind of where he buys a motorcycle and you're like, oh, this is not going to end it's well. It's not going to end well, no. <laughs> and, you know, Zach Efron is the one who is the veteran who has he's next in line to be the the great next thing and he's he's paid his dues and he's stoic and he's hardworking and Loves he's the family. glue he's the glue of the family right yeah. you know Harris Dickinson as David it's it's the showy rule he comes in and he's the he's the showman of them all so each of them has this one note and then there's the the younger brother Mike who is a musician and doesn't want anything to do with any of this and the family doesn't understand that like each of them is one note and that's so frustrating and the fact that there is an entire von eric as you say that they have omitted chris von eric like he's just not even here and this is a serious problem i think for a film that's all about 
the importance of this fraternal bond and the insularity of this family to just completely erase a person is weird. And I know yeah. why he did it. I know that Sean Durkin, who I'm a huge fan of, by the way. Sure, yeah. I love Martha, Marcy, May, Marlene. Me too. I loved The Nest, the criminally underseen yes. The Nest. We were big supporters of that one. Huge fans. Carrie Coon can do no wrong. Um, But like, I'm, I'm a fan of him. And stylistically, this has a lot going for it. You know, from the very first shot you see of, you know, as a faraway shot of a wrestling ring in grainy black and white flashing back to the dad and his supposed glory days. Like, there's a lot of style and a lot of verb. We get to hear the entirety of Tom Sawyer, <laughs> you know, and we get to find out why this song matters to them. I don't know how much you knew about the Von Erics. I knew not very a ton, little, to be honest. <clears throat> but I know that Tom Sawyer was like their anthem and their that moment. Music, yeah. Right when, when the moment that Mike puts the record on the turntable and puts the needle down and you hear the first notes of that song and then the way it pushes into Carrie as he's lifting weights down the garage. It's it's Scorsesean, the <laughs> verve of it and the emotion of it and the you thrill need a of montage. it. montage. It's totally a montage. You get, if you like Rush, like I like Rush, you get all of Tom Sawyer. So that part is fun. It has a lot of style, but it ultimately ends up feeling really unsatisfying. And even Zac Efron, who there's such physicality to it, he got frighteningly buff for this and is almost unrecognizable um even he just is given this stoic role to play and when they do give him the opportunity to emote it feels i don't know a little cheesy he has some nice moments <laughs> with lily james but they're kind yeah. of all the same moment yeah you know where like she's a little more worldly and sophisticated but like is clearly into him and is supportive of him and it's nice and they have a nice rapport but like it doesn't it doesn't take it things to another place. You know, the early buzz on this was like, oh, grown men are weeping at this movie mm -hmm. and stuff. And I'm like, I just... and it, 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 we talked about the ending of American fiction and whether or not it worked for us. And this movie takes a sudden veer into magical realism that's like, w -w -w what? Yeah. That I really didn't buy. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what's happening here. If only the Von Erichs had lightsabers to fight with in the ring, they would have ascended to even greater heights of, of wrestling superstardom, kind of like the ones that we are fans of here at Breakfast All Day from End Sabers. If you're looking for a lightsaber for either a kid who enjoys all that Star Wars fun or more serious cosplay for grown people who dress and know what they're doing, um, they have a whole wide variety of them at different prices, different complexities. They have cool handles you can customize and light that change sound color sound effects that aren't just like whoa they do lots they, they talk <laughs> nick loves his it makes all kinds of noises it sounds like kylo ren and yoda and name a person <laughs> in a star war and they're in this we have a deal with our friends at end sabers a great deal for them it's all kinds of holiday stuff going on with them our link is down below our code is breakfast all day check out end sabers yes and so it is one tragedy after another if you know the von eric saga but it ends up feeling, as you say, kind of episodic, like this happened, then this happened, then this happened, to such an extent that it's almost not moving. Like, it's almost just like, here's a thing, like a Wikipedia page. Yeah. Like, if you're not going to make the documentary and you're going to have the freedom to sort of like, you know, erase a brother or to just sort of tell a story in a more cinematic way, then that should open some doors to like making this a richer and, and, and more moving experience. But as it is, I think you could just do, you could have just done the documentary and with the right music cues made it real sad because it's a very sad story. What happens to these guys, but somehow that just doesn't, you don't feel that in this movie. At least I didn't. I didn't either. And Holt McCallany is quite fearsome and loathsome mm. as their father. Um, and you can see it's so transparent, all the vicarious glory that he's expecting his yeah. children to bestow upon them. And he's, but he's, he's one note, too. He's exactly one note. He's one note every time. And so even when things get really, really serious toward the end and he is still that one note, it didn't land for me because I'm like, there's no evolution whatsoever. There's no humanity at all. He was this much of a prick the whole way through. Really? How is that possible? Maura Tierney is the one person who sort of like takes in what's going on and decides maybe we need to try something different. Um, and then she's, she's the only character who's allowed that at all. I mean, yeah, I, I, this, this is a, this is one of my biggest disappointments of the year. I, I thought th this was a movie mm -hmm. that came in with, with, you know, with Durkin and with this cast and with this story, I, I, I thought would be uh, a lot better.
Also, as good as they are, they're all miscast from a physicality perspective. Like, <laughs> Carrie Von Erich was 6'2", 220-something. Right. Jeremy yeah. Allen White is not. No. <laughs> Zach I, Efron is not. Harris I, Dickinson's tall. <laughs> sure. I you ha, I, I made allowances there because I Did that's you? the kind of thing okay. of like, do we cast for type or do we get the actor and then hope the actor can just look, look like it, you know? And I was like, okay, I'm, if Tom Cruise can play Jack Reacher, everything's on the table, you know? <laughs> they do look it. From he, from here up, they look it, right? Sure. From from the torso up. I'll, yes. I'll give them that. What is your number? <sighs> okay. Like a five, I guess. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, I, th this seems like such a missed opportunity. And, and I think there, there are moments here where you see the effort of, of, of going into it and why Durkin even wanted to make this movie. But the, the script just doesn't, doesn't give you what, what it could be. You know, it's a letdown. Yeah, I'll say six. It is like deeply steeped in cheesy 80s Texas style. And everyone is going for it here. And I wish that they were going for it in the service of a script that was meteor, you know, like the effort is there kind of like wrestling itself, right? Like the effort is there. The desire to entertain is there, but it's ultimately the writing needs to be better. <laughs> it's pretty superficial, right? Yes. So Iron Claws in theaters is Friday. Let us know if you're going to see it.